Hello everybody, I'm Oliver from Blenders.com and I'm really excited to show you this thing that we have been working on for a few years already. Uh, this is Beauty Render, it's an add-on that will make it a lot easier and faster to create very realistic renders. And I'm going to explain to you in this quick video, I'm going to explain to you how it works. Now, I want to stress before we start that this is just uh, still in development and uh, it might crash. Uh, we have some uh, issues still that we are trying to fix. We have bugs. And this that I'm going to use is a very special version that I have set up internally. We uh, we removed all the options from the menus and everything. So uh, we know it will work, all right? We, we just did the setup that we know that uh, will mostly work with this specific scene. So this is just for demonstration purposes, it's still in development. Uh, so if you're interested in this and uh, you are a developer, feel free to uh, tell us to, so you can join the team. Uh, we've been working on this for some five years already. And in fact, you may notice that this is working under Blender Render uh, because there was no cycles uh, back then when we started. And uh, really for what we do here with Beauty Render, it doesn't really matter what render engine we use. Okay, because we are not actually going to render 3D geometry. I'm going to explain to you in a moment how we're going to work. And guys, believe me, this is the future. Uh, remember, if you want to achieve realistic, very realistic results, you have to spend years learning. You have to learn the tools. You have to use the particles, set them up, set the materials, uh, download this uh, material library, buy that add-on. Uh, all, all that will be gone with this, okay? And let me explain to you how it works. Basically, uh, first we enable here the beauty render. You can see it's in the render category. Okay, these are preferences. And we have this scene. This is all we need, okay? We have this scene and uh, you can see it's uh, quite crappy, very basic geometry, but this is basically going to define our scene. We could be more specific or we can be even less specific than this, okay? The more specific we are, of course, the more defined the results will be. But in this case, for demonstration purposes, this will be enough. So the only thing we need is several meshes, and these meshes will define the different planes of, the, uh, of our images. This is very close to the camera. We have a camera position. We have the light source and the direction of the light. This is really important. This is key. And then we have these different, uh, these different meshes. What uh, this tries to define, if we go here, is uh, some shapes, okay? And, uh, well, we can think of them as uh, maybe mountains, different uh, planes of mountains, uh, the ones that, uh, this is very important, the, the, the origins of these meshes have to be ordered, okay? So each one of them is behind the previous one. So the add-on knows the distance from the camera, okay? Because it will analyze them, it will analyze the shapes, and uh, it, it will recognize the what is the background this one that is a plane that is in the very last this will automatically be recognized as a background so here it will just uh, add a, a very uh, an image of a sky or something like this so okay let me show you what it looks like um, basically as I told you now this is a very basic version um, and we removed all the um, all the properties and everything because uh, we don't want it to to crash there are a lot of options we can even control like the wetness of the floor and all these kind of things like the amount of grass uh, how dry the grass is the amount of trees and uh, the type of trees we can control all this and um, uh, but in this case we are going to leave it uh, random and we have set up some of the stuff but it's done internally so we make sure it doesn't crash when I'm here tweaking the, the things because it, it, it crashed pretty often because this is quite complex to be honest. Um, so basically I only left here the options that we need for launching this. So first you can see that here we have the scene setup and we, we don't have uh, frames per second or anything like that any longer. We only have the resolution because we are going to export an image. And here we have the beauty render button. So we don't have the render anymore. We, we just do beauty renders uh, very quickly now. We don't, we don't need a, a normal render anymore. If we can do it beautiful, why do we need normal, right? Uh, then we have the animation that we removed because this, um, this method for now, uh, and, and, and I, I don't really have plans on doing any animation because I think it's uh, impossible to be honest, but uh, it doesn't work in animation. It only works with uh, still frames, but still it's really, really nice. You will see it now. And we left this thing that uh, when you click it, it generates uh, automatically binaural beats for you to concentrate and uh, stuff while uh, you wait for the render to, to come out, okay? Because it might take a while. 
Uh, you can see here that it also um, stresses here uh, that it's using the Google engine. Um, so basically, let me explain how this works. Blender is going to analyze these shapes. I'm going to uh, talk a little more about that in a moment. And uh, it's going to look on Google for photos of uh, shapes that, that, that are similar to these shapes and have a similar point light, uh, a similar, uh, you know, shadows direction and all this sort of thing. And uh, also it's going to search under the keys of nature forest in this, in this case, okay, to make sure that all the images that will compose this image following these shapes are like uh, forest or nature stuff, okay. Um, the reason why I'm demonstrating this and not a city, we have a lot more setups uh, on the works. But uh, the cities, for example, are more complex because we have a lot of parallel lines and things like that. And for composing those images and keeping the lines parallel, it's, kind of, it's, it's been something very tricky and very hard. So um, I just uh, added this option for nature and forest for this demonstration because it's the one that we know works best. Okay, it's, uh, it's organic. So the transitions between images and all this stuff are easier to get, okay? So it will work most of the times right. We might have some little issues and some stuff like that, but uh, well, generally it works pretty well. So let me just click on uh, Beauty Render and let's see the magic happens. Okay, so I, I basically accelerated a little the uh, process that you can see here, okay? Because it, uh, it takes a few minutes. Uh, this one uh, particularly took some 10 minutes, okay? Around 10 minutes, more or less. We still don't have the interface uh, to show the time uh, on the on the screen, but it took around 10 minutes, which is not a lot for the kind of realistic render that we are going to get. So now, as you can see, um, what you're seeing on the screen is basically uh, Blender analyzing the geometry, every single vertex, analyzing the shapes, analyzing the direction in which uh, they are looking for, analyzing the distance from the camera, all these sort of things, all these sort of uh, parameters. So then when looking for photos, it's more optimized and it looks for the, um, for the uh, photos that adapt better to these kind of surfaces, okay? So once it finishes uh, analyzing the geometry, it starts looking for images that could feed that geometry and uh, based on the nature uh, para parameters that we have set. And then it starts compositing. This is happening on the cloud. If you're interested on, um, on the libraries that we are using and all this stuff, just uh, keep looking. I'm uh, giving you a link at the end. And uh, after the cloud computing is uh, more and more refined, it basically starts refining the solution, okay, and uh, basically merging all those images together. Here there are, there are easily some uh, between 50 or 100 images, okay, and they are just being mixed together. And then finally, it adjusts the color and everything, and voila, we have our final render. Now, keep in mind that all these uh, these things will be adjustable at the end, you know, as I said before, like the amount of trees in this case or the wetness of the floor, all these sort of things to, to make it more controllable and giving more options to the artist to control the result. Uh, also, if you don't want this uh, type of color adjustments or, or all these sort of things, just you, you will be able to disable them. For now, they are just enabled uh, for this demo purpose, okay? So, um, so yeah, this is the render and let's take a look to the render. Well, as you can see, this is pretty powerful stuff. We just defined a few planes that I did in some five minutes. And here we have all these mountains and uh, these trees and everything. Okay, yes, there are some, uh, some little issues still. Uh, keep in mind that this is a development version. Um, but uh, you can see that this transition between these type of grass to the background is kind of tricky. Uh, maybe this tree here doesn't totally fit and you can see how the borders are not really well cut. Um, so there are some interesting things like this. This tree looks like uh, it's, it's been cloned uh, a few times in the same spot, but still it gives a pretty nice result and very realistic and believable. Of course, there are some issues sometimes like uh, here it looks like we have a, a little uh, you know, a little artifact in the cloning. Looks like maybe it tried to continue this, um, this road on the other side or something like that. And here, this is something that, 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 that happens a lot of times um, that, you know, we find in the, in the images that uh, 
uh, we scout on the email on, on the internet sorry uh, we see that uh, they, they add some website or some photographer's name or something like that and so uh, I don't know I, I will I will probably end up developing some option that allows us to break the copyright thing so if it detects some text or something like that it automatically cuts it from the image so we can violate copyright properly and uh, we also have uh, one last feature that I wanted to show you which is the what we call the ton generator and the ton generator's purpose is to generate a ton of tons uh, this may sound a, sound a little tricky and uh, it's actually true it can generate a lot of tons in our image um, now in this case I have set it up so it just um, adds one so we have to make an effort to find it so let's see where Ton is. Where are you, Ton? Where are you? Maybe are you hidden around here using Autodesk? Maybe here down in the streets? Where are you, Ton? I'm gonna find you. Oh, here you are. There is our Ton generator. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's great because it basically adds life to your scene. Okay, so in this case, for example, that we just have a nature scene and we don't have any life on it. We don't have any birds or any persons or anything. It just adds a little ton. And uh, it, it generally, uh, it, it was funny because the add-on itself developed some kind of uh, uh, artificial intelligence that uh, makes it to add tons. Like uh, they are kind of hidden behind trees and stuff like that, like stocking. Uh, this was, I swear, automatically generated. I, I didn't uh, code this. So, so yeah, we have here ton stocking behind a tree really cool huh so so yeah we just should fix uh, this uh, this uh, website here and uh, the cloning here uh, maybe uh, add some little tricks here but you can see that you know right out of the bat this is really amazing we just had a few surfaces and we have now almost looks like a photo super realistic the, there are little issues with the coloring here in the background, uh, sudden changes in the color, but uh, it kind of looks like we have shadows from the clouds. So it's a, a happy mistake. Let's call it like that. Okay, so I really hope you like it. If you want to know more about what we are doing, uh, keep in mind that this is just a little demo. Uh, we are working on a lot more uh, features, so uh, feel free to visit blentus.com slash beauty render and uh, there you will find more information. You will be able to download this version so you can play with it uh, a little bit. And keep in mind that this is still in early development. Uh, even if we have been doing this for years, this is a really, really uh, incredibly difficult uh, stuff. So, uh, you know, keep in mind that it might crash. We have a lot of problems. That's why for this demo, I just use a very controlled uh, uh, setup. So, uh, you know, I couldn't change anything or anything because uh, it just is the default setting so we know it works, okay? So uh, who knows, maybe try with your own surfaces and show me the re results that you get. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm laughing, I'm sorry. Um, all right guys, so just happy blending, goodbye.